Chewie here in the lab for part five of Rover Build. To recap, we've sourced the drills, we've harvested the motors and modified them, and we've sourced the wheels and modified those. On to the next step, the chassis. Now this is what I refer to as the nose piece, and it houses the uh, large sleeve bushing that takes the majority of the load from the output shaft. Uh, and it has a nice flat mounting surface here and then the motor is also a nice flat mounting surface. So we'll use those two surfaces to mount the motor. Here is a piece of half inch by one inch and quarter inch by one inch aluminum. There's a... And from the industrial supplier they come in 12 foot lengths. Uh, at the hardware store I have seen them in 6 foot lengths and one six foot length of one inch by quarter will be the perfect amount to make one rover. Uh, this is a bandsaw and it's the fast and precise way to do it, but a hacksaw will certainly do the same job. Well, just cut this off, one foot length. can, of course, accomplish the exact same thing with a file and a little bit of manual labor, but it just takes a little longer. Here are our frame rails. Two sets, one thick, one thin. So the cheapest and easiest way to clamp these is with pipe clamps. So these stretch just ever so slightly going over the motor and the nose piece. And you can see there's a gap, so when you put some uh, screws through there, it actually pulls those down into tension a little bit. So these are the pipe clamps that I've found work. A three quarter inch for rigid conduit and a one inch also for rigid. This base plate is 12 by 12. So that's roughly the layout. And uh, these cutouts in the aluminum are not really necessary with these wheels. These specific drills stick out far enough there where this does not interfere. Um, some models do require that, others do not. Now, I use uh, long screws. These are again 1032 by 2 inches. And then those are uh, secured with nylon lock nuts. You can see these have a uh, little nylon insert so that they don't vibrate loose. Um, however, an advantage of using the plywood is you can just drive wood screws uh, right through these holes into the deck. The, the plywood is, is incredibly flexible in that way and although this is very specific, this part of the build is actually quite flexible. Uh, there's no reason these absolutely need to be made of aluminum. My first model was made out of wood. Uh, there's no reason it actually has to be this specific dimensions. Uh, you can use a, a double stack of these in place of that. That way you only have to buy one length. One six foot bar of this would be enough to do the whole chassis. Um, I've used things like old VCR and computer cases instead of a plywood deck. Uh, if you wanted it bigger, if you wanted it giant, you could use something like a hollow core wood door and make a six foot big robot. Uh, you could probably even get away with stacking up cardboard and using it as a deck and using it as spacers. Uh, so, so this is where you get to uh, use a little bit of creativity and uh, and find some materials perhaps. But uh, I've found about this size, 12 by 12, is a uh, good middle point between being uh, large enough to be very stable and give you enough surface area to put stuff on the top, as well as being narrow enough and small enough that it can get around corners and through doorways 